Oleksandr Tichenko is Ukraine's cultural and, uh, immigra and information policy minister. We are not going to share Minister Tichenko's location, obviously for security reasons. Uh, Minister, I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, can you give us a sense, first of all, of the, of this, the overall situation and, and your government's key concern right now? Uh, situation is not good because war is continuous and civilians are killed. Uh, situation is good that because we continue fighting and situation will be better because for definitely we will win. Uh, so, and despite all terrible uh, news we're hearing almost each day, each morning I get a message from my relatives. Uh, when our allies finally can help us with arms and financial support. That's the question we're asking each day. Okay, and let's talk about that. There's more requests for lethal weapons, non-lethal weapons. There's requests for, um, obviously, financial support. Uh, um, there has been a request for uh, a no-fly zone. NATO continues to refuse that. Um, is that a request that is going to continue from Ukraine? Uh, yes, it continues because when you see eyes of kids uh, that are flowing from Ukraine to uh, more peaceful uh, Western countries, uh, when you see uh, people, uh, civilians who were killed, the request for no-fly zone is uh, obvious for us. But if it's not possible for any reasons, at least aircrafts and air defense system uh, are hardly needed. You can see the pictures now on your screen. And that uh, for sure shows that despite all spirit all our defenders have, uh, we need uh, for sure ad additional support uh, in arms uh, to uh, bring back uh, all Russian uh, new Nazi troops which are entering now Ukraine. Because uh, any war starts with any reason. Uh, with some reason. The only reason which Russia has in their mind is to take over Ukraine. Uh, that's the same reason which, which Nazis have when they were trying to bring so-called uh, higher race uh, philosophy to other territories. T tell me uh, about the talks between Ukraine and Russia. They have paused. Is there any hope that these talks might lead to a de-escalation or some kind of end to this? Or do you believe Russia uses these talks just as pretext to escalate more bombing? We believe that saving lives is a priority for Ukrainians. Saving lands is also a priority for us. So any talks which can bring uh, peace and bring and take away Russian troops uh, are important. So if there are any room for negotiations, of course, we will try to use it. And of course, it's important that finally President Zelensky can speak uh, to Putin. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. But I will say President Zelensky is going to speak to uh, the Canadian Parliament tomorrow. Uh, can you give us any indication, if you know, what message he will send to Canada? Uh, I have a little idea what he will say, but as soon as he spoke already to several parliaments, I believe uh, the message uh, could be uh, to uh, impose a new sanctions, especially about embargo for oil and gas uh, export of Russia, uh, impose uh, additional uh, sanctions of different multinational companies that are still working in Russia. So uh, Russians can feel a little bit pain, as we're feeling now, by losing our lives. Economically pain. It's peaceful pain. So let them feel to live in Northern Korea. If they choose this president, let them feel uh, to live in the country uh, uh, which are in isolation. Mm. And... Uh, of course, we definitely need, once again, arms and financial support. Is there anything specific from Canada? Uh, Canada sent anti-tank weapons, it has sent um, hand grenades, it sent non-lethal support. Is there more, in your view, that Canada particularly can send or can do? Uh, all Ukrainians have special feelings about Canada. According to opinion polls uh, across uh, the opinion leaders, 
uh, in Ukraine recently we made in our ministry, the first country which we want to follow as an example was Canada. Not only because of many Ukrainians live in Canada, but because of your peaceful approach of uh, uh, tolerant system of uh, civilized way of solving questions. So for us, Canada is something like a goal which we want to achieve. So there is a special feelings between Ukrainians uh, to Canada, and I believe uh, uh, definitely you can expect warm uh, words from President Zelensky to Canadians. Uh, let me just say, and I don't speak on behalf of every Canadian, but I think I might, the warm feelings are very mutual, sir, to Ukraine. And we have, a, as you know, the second largest diaspora outside of Russia here uh, of Ukraine. And so there's very warm feelings. Uh, before I let you go, and I hope you and your family are safe, uh, can you, there's much worry here about the precarious situation of Kyiv, the capital. The Russians obviously have put that as their main target. Can you give us an assessment of, of where the Russians are surrounding the capital and the state right now of, of the capital? Uh, as a person who was born in Kyiv, who lived in Kyiv almost all his life, uh, I'm 100% sure uh, we will never give up Kyiv. Uh, and it's not only about symbol, it's about uh, uh, belief uh, that uh, Kyiv uh, never will be taken off by barbarians. Uh, new barbarians, which Russians are. So uh, whatever happens, I'm more uh, worried about Mariupol, which is now surrendered, and where more than 2,000 people were killed, including children. Mm. Uh, so, uh, and uh, when I saw these pictures of their attacks of Mariupol, uh, and uh, how they act, uh, I can't believe, I still can't believe that it happened in 21st century. Uh, so uh, all this should be finished and definitely with punishment of Russian uh, leaders. What is happening in Mariupol, what's happening in Kharkiv, what's happening in so many places is just tragic to watch. Sir, I really appreciate... Um you talking to us, the uh, um, information and policy information policy minister, Oleksandr Tachenko, please. I know you're in an undisclosed location. I hope you and your family remain safe. 